Hey everyone, welcome to a What I Eat in a Day video. Everything in this video is gonna be plant-based, vegan, and very simple, but that doesn't mean it's not gonna be flavorful and pretty easy to make at the same time. I hope you guys get some good meal ideas from this video. I started with a really delicious and hearty breakfast. I went to the farmer's market on this day, and I made a healthier version of one of my favorite comfort foods. So I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you to Seed for teaming up with me, and let's get right into breakfast. One of my favorite things is to set the coffee pot the night before. That way I can just walk into the kitchen and flip it on. It just makes me feel very grateful to pass Nicole for thinking of future Nicole in the morning when I'm tired and don't wanna prep the coffee pot. So while that was brewing, I made some tofu scramble and I love to sneak veggies into my tofu scramble, whether it's cauliflower rice like I did on this day, or sometimes I'll do sauteed mushrooms or I'll saute the tofu with white beans to make it really creamy and add some good fiber. It's really fun to kind of change it up. Oh, a handful of spinach is something I do too. You can really add a lot of good veggies first thing in the morning by just sauteing the veggies into your tofu scramble and it's a great way to add more plant diversity into your diet. On this day, I went ahead and I had some toast with vegan butter and strawberry jam, one of my all-time favorite combos. Had a cup of coffee with some pea milk because that's what I had on hand and this was my breakfast. I will put the recipe for tofu scramble in the description box below, but it's a super fast breakfast. It comes together in like five, six minutes and it kind of feels a little bit special when you have it like this feels like I went to like some cool breakfast spot So every morning before breakfast, I roll out of bed, I get some water, I take my probiotic, and then I usually get back into bed and just like scroll through my phone for a while. But I like to make sure that I take my probiotic on an empty stomach. And the one that I take is by Seed. It's actually a two-in-one probiotic and prebiotic, so they call it a symbiotic. And I teamed up with them to bring you this portion of the video because I know that a lot of you guys are like me, and you're very food science-minded and nutrition-minded. So the way that it works is the probiotic is the good bacteria, and the prebiotic is the fiber that the probiotic basically eats and once it does that it creates compounds one of them is butyrate and that helps to reinforce the gut lining which can support nutrient absorption and also help contain pathogens I also learned that bacteria are highly sensitive to light moisture and heat and so a lot of the fermented foods that I thought contained a lot of probiotics don't actually fit the scientific definition of what a probiotic is. Doesn't mean they're not good foods. I eat sauerkraut like it's going out of style. It's definitely a delicious and nutritious food, but if you're counting on fermented foods as your probiotics, they're probably not gonna be viable because they do come in contact with light, heat and oxygen. So I really like that the Seed Daily Symbiotic is protected and this really cool capsule design. It's also a two-in-one, so it's a capsule in a capsule. And what that does is it protects the bacteria so that it can actually make it through the digestive system where it can help to populate the microbiome and support good gut health. And when you have good gut health, it not only supports immunity, cardiovascular health, respiratory health, dermatological health, and most importantly, and most interesting to me, nutrient absorption and regularity. Because as you guys know, I eat a very healthy the plant-based diet and I want to make sure that I'm really getting those nutrients from the food into my body and absorbing them properly and good gut health is a big part of that you guys can learn a lot more about the science behind it on their Instagram which I will link down below they have so much information and some really interesting videos and the highlights that I 20 out of 10 recommend because I know you guys like food science stuff too so that will be in the description box below as well as a link to try seed you can use this link and my code for 15% off your first month and free shipping whether you're shopping at the farmer's market or at the local grocery store, I really recommend taking a couple of minutes to talk to the people who work there, whether it's the people that work in the produce section at the grocery store or the farmers at the farmer's market. Ask them questions about the produce. How do they cook it? How do they recommend preparing it? What's their favorite way to serve it? You learn so much that way and I, I can't recommend it enough. I thought it'd be fun to show you what I got at the farmer's market. And first and foremost, the thing I really wanted to get was some peaches and some nectarines. The summer's almost over and I really haven't had enough of these. So I got some really beautiful peaches and nectarines. And the lady was really kind at one of the stands and she actually threw this one in. I can't remember what it's called. It's something really funny, like flavor explosion or dynamic flavor explosion or something like that. But it's this green and red plum. And then this one is like a purple plum that has kind of a heart shape. So they're kind of similar in shape and size, but she said this one is really good. They're both a little bit too hard. I'm gonna let them ripen up in the fruit bowl. These are really cool. I've never had these before. They've got like green, red, and purple stripes all over them. And again, they're kind of oblong. This beautiful 
tomato. I just like, when I saw these, I was like not gonna get any more, but I just couldn't leave without them. So I got two of these beautiful guys. I really, really like the cherry tomatoes that are this color. They're just really sweet. If you don't like tomatoes, try the yellowish orange ones around this time of year. They're just so flavorful. Don't have that like sharp acidity. They tend to have a little bit more of like a sweetness and like juiciness to them. Also got some early girl tomatoes. These were just like so full of juice. These were in the sun and they were just like so plump and like vibrantly red. They almost didn't even look real because they're just so red and so fresh right now. And same thing with these little heirloom guys. Like they are just so cute. This is the one I think I have to do first because it's already like bursting just from being carried home because it's just like so tender so i'm going to slice this up i think for lunch today roan mills is the place that i get sourdough whenever i go to the hollywood farmers market they mill their own flour and they've got really good like sourdough they've got a rosemary sourdough french style sourdough focaccia they've got an olive bread that's really good normally what i do is i slice off a few on the day that i got it i usually enjoy it right away which is what i'm gonna do today and then i will slice and freeze the rest and just like toast it up as i need I love all of the meals I eat in a day, but lunch is probably the one that is the least convenient. I just find that it's hard to stop in the middle of the day and like make myself a proper meal. So generally my go-to is stuff on toast. Like just stuff on bread is my go-to meal at lunchtime. And I usually do either a savory version like this, or I'll do like peanut butter with bananas or apples. Super simple, but I honestly love it. It makes me feel really good and it could not be simpler. So on this day, I took some of the bread from the farmer's market. I chopped some of the pieces with avocado and some with a creamy cheese spread. This is actually my whipped feta dip recipe that I'll link below. And I just blended some sun-dried tomatoes and herbs into it and it seriously tasted like pizza. So good and so easy. For snacks, super random on this day. At some point I had a handful of pistachios. I also had some of this vegan chocolate that my mom brought back from England. It's by Deliciously Ella and I'm a huge fan of hers. So that was fun. It's not as sweet as I was expecting it to be. It's definitely way less sweet than a lot of other chocolates. I also had this cucumber and random tahini sauce that I found in the fridge while I was making dinner. Speaking of dinner, on this night I was really craving nachos and instead of ordering out, I decided to make potato nachos because I had pretty much everything on hand and I always feel so good when I eat potato nachos because all of the ingredients are foods that honestly just make me feel really, really good. They're tasty, hearty, and satisfying and much more budget friendly than ordering takeout. So I started by roasting some potatoes. I did sweet potatoes and regular potatoes on this day. They get nice and crispy around the edges and stay tender on the inside. During that time, I also made some nacho cheese sauce and I always have the stuff to make nacho cheese sauce on hand because it's really just pantry staples and some frozen butternut squash. I blend it all together and it turns into this thick and delicious cheese sauce. The trick is to add a little bit of the brine from the jar of pickled jalapenos. That's what really makes it taste like that nacho cheese sauce that we all love. And I like to heat it up because it helps to thicken it and make it really, really creamy. So I just stir that and warm it through and then it's time to assemble the nachos. And this is my favorite part. I'm all about layers when it comes to nachos because I want them all to have some toppings. So on layer one, I have some batch cooked lentils in the fridge that I sprinkled on top with some frozen corn and red onions. Put some tomatoes on top of that and a layer of that cheese sauce. Look at that. Layer number two, we're gonna do the exact same thing. It's fun to alternate the regular potatoes with the sweet potatoes. I feel like it looks really pretty. Not that it matters, but it's just visually very appealing. Instead of sour cream, I'm using some plain unsweetened almond milk yogurt, and I added some cilantro and sliced radishes on top. You guys, this was so delicious. It's almost like having a stuffed baked potato, but just kind of thinly sliced and in nacho form. So it's just a fun way to eat your potatoes. If you've never tried potato nachos, I'll link some recipes below. Oh, my hair is still wet and it's like sticky. I hate when my hair is like half wet, half dry. Not the point. I really like mixing the sweet potato and the regular potato because the sweet potato with the spices is so, so good. I also think the addition of like crunchy toppings, like I have some really thinly sliced radish here. And I think having that little element of crunch is nice because obviously potato nachos they get crispy around the edges but they're not as like crunchy as a chip so i do like that having that like crunchy element provides some texture sometimes i'll go ahead and crush up like tortilla chips on top almost like 
a sprinkle of croutons, if you will. Nice texture, adds a little saltiness, super tasty. So I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy my dinner, but I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I eat in a day. I hope this video gave you some good ideas. Make sure you check out the description box below because that's where you'll find the recipes and the nacho cheese sauce and also the link to try seed. If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.